the fuck's going on here? Oh. Technical difficulties. Thanks, Chris, for ruining the streak that beer analysis had. Uh, you got it? Yeah, we're okay right now, I think. If anything happens, then uh, I blame Greg. All right. Well, most okay, people do. So, anyway, let's get down into the business. Welcome back to Beer Analysis 101 with your host, Maxwell Starr. Thanks for watching, Beer Tubers. Tonight, we've got. Uh, a treat from, I believe this is uh, Octobico, right, Greg? It is from Octobico. It's almost right across the street. Yeah. This is and, the same uh, water I pee in. Yeah, great. That's probably what explains the color. So we're going to do Von Bugle Brewing's Von Bugle Munich Lager. Uh, we'll get into the details of it, and I imagine Greg knows the details better than I do, so uh, we'll, we'll yeah. definitely interview him during the history. But uh, uh, let's get down to who we got here on the panel tonight. We, of course, got Mr. Ashley Sexton of Sexton Brewing. How are you doing? Doing fantastic, thank you. How are you today? Huh? I'm doing all right. I'm home from work, and that's what matters. <laughs> all right, and uh, Mr. Redbeard, nice to see you. I think this is the third week in a row, isn't it? Yeah, baby. I'm a regular right. now. Thanks Woo. for having me, Macwell. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. Yeah. Woo. No worries. We'll let anybody. No, I actually won't let anybody in. But All right. Uh, speaking of letting people, anybody in, uh, Mr. Chris of uh, off, the ten, uh, off the Tenth, and, of course, Chris Leedzak Photography, who uh, does really great uh, real estate shots. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Thank you for having me, Macwell. Uh, I'm really excited to try this beer for the first time. Um my computer's pretty glitchy, so if I if I cop out or if I freeze up or whatever, then I'll just continue drinking it and totally not drain for it. Nice. Thank you. All right, yeah. No worry, you can just message me your ratings and we'll add them to the list. But we'll definitely bet you out when we do it. But yeah, if you have to leave, it's fine. Uh, we'll give you a pass tonight. Anyway, and uh, also the, uh, the master of breaking the freshness seal, Mr. Greg, how are you tonight, sir? Peachy keen, good, sir. Peachy keen. Yeah. yeah, you're ready to uh, make like the rest of us and peel that off in a few minutes. Oh, yeah, but this has to stay on to the very last second. Otherwise, this beer could get Could be ruined. completely contaminated. Yeah. No, okay. can't trust anybody. Uh, absolutely. You know, Jamie made the right choice. You know, he, he couldn't find a freshness <laughs> seal. He find one with a freshness seal. There's, so there's, there's, just, there's just no chance you want to risk it. You get the freshness seal. If you don't get the freshness seal, just don't drink the beer. It's oh, garbage. All, all freshness seal BS aside, uh, when did they start doing that? Was it March or something they started doing the freshness yeah, seal? Yeah, earlier this year into the first few months. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, wow. Chris Lezak is just flickering like crazy for me right now. Yeah. So that's, that's weird. Chris is becoming a ghost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was something it's like happening. that, and I don't know. They've given a lot of flack for it, and actually, the funny thing is now their six packs, the ones that are already covered in plastic, they don't do the freshness seal anymore. They seem to have gotten rid of that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was kind of crazy. Well, well yeah, um, but I'm just saying, like, we'll we'll come back to that. But I'm just saying, like, uh, if Jamie couldn't get one to come on tonight and didn't have freshness seals, it probably means that they're really old at this point. Yeah, because they fall off pretty easy. And as far as I know, they're still right. producing them with them on. So, yeah, it's so, probably... Anyway. Fun beer is only about four months old at this point anyway. It's not a particularly old beer, so... Uh, Maybe it's older than that. details on that, but yeah, you're wrong. Uh, I was going to ask you... Probably. Yeah. After the history, but let's get to the history. And uh, say Von Bugle Music Lager, the story of Von Bugle starts with another Ontario brewery, Steam Whistle, a brewery founded in 1998. By Greg Taylor, Cam Heaps, and Greg Conwell, Cromwell in a former CN Rail roundhouse near the foot of the CN Tower in downtown Toronto, focusing on making their beer exception one beer one beer exceptionally well. The with the help of former Pilsner or Quell uh, brewer Merrick Macunda, they focused their attention on brewing an authentic Czech style Pilsner that became a success. We all know Steam Whistle, but. Uh, in light of Steam Whistle's focus on making one beer exceptionally well, but wanting to move on to brew something new, in May 2018, it was announced that the new subsidiary brewery had opened up in nearby Etobicoke with Merrick Bakunda of uh, their, their, their brewmaster, uh, opening as the brewmaster to brew a new Munich-style lager called Von Bugle. It's a short history tonight. So, Avon Bugle is a 5% ABV, 33 IBU, Munich style lager made with Noble and Kazbek hops. And they said that Kazbek is a proprietary hop that they use 
test for this, I guess. Uh, anyway, so traditional and uh, specialty malts brewed according to the Bavarian purity law, Rhein Heichsgebot, and uh, using a long aging process akin to that of traditional German lagers. Anyway, so yeah, uh, Greg, you probably could correct me on some stuff like that. Now, where, whereabouts did you say they are in uh, in Tovico? They are literally here. I unfortunately cannot see them from my balcony. But if uh, here, as soon as this thing stu stupid thing works, you, you, you've frozen up. Okay, well, there you go. No, oh, I'll try to switch my camera. Move. Maybe it won't let me do it during hangar. Oh, you great. Got, oh, we just yeah, lost well, you like Chris. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Hold Why don't you just turn, it's your camera. Why don't you just turn it around? Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, there's my finger. Where's my finger? So this is Queen. This is Etobicoke. This is an intersection of Queensway and Islington. Oh God, people know where I live now. They're gonna murder me. So oh, you can great. take this highway up, over the QEW. The bridge is there. There's Evans Avenue right behind the movie theater. You go, oh, yeah. just over there, and the brewery is about right there. You can't actually see it from here, but that's just it's, tells it's you just like here. a short walk away. Now it's like right close to Cool Brewing, isn't it? Oh my god, now I gotta switch my camera again. Oh. Cool Brewing is literally, that's Cool Brewing right there. There's the tower there. Yeah. Just right on the other side. That's literally my finger is touching Cool Brewery right there. So oh, that wow. tells you how close it is. Great Lakes Brewing is basically would be over here if you could see it. Hmm. Black Oak Brewing would essentially be just there, down the street there, if you could see it. So they're all very in very close proximity to each other. Nice. Like the top right. a very close-knit family apparently all right so let's get back on topic here so we're doing von bugle uh we might as well read some comments while we're at it we got uh kent beer reviews in the cha chat saying yo yo craig how you doing El eric up? gilbert says cheers von dutch uh fast forward here J jamie says greg is my purity seal i try to be eric gilbert says the can hymen and also, has anyone trialed Steam Whistle Pale Ale yet? Which, of course, I haven't. I have. And okay, Craig says, hi, Ashley. How are you? So, hi, Ash. And uh, 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 so, Chris is going to give me a seizure, says Eric. Yeah, well, it's probably yeah, why he's coming I, back. I take that out, Craig. Sorry. All right. So, uh, Eric Gilbert says, oh, geez, the Queen's Way. Where's the meth heads? I know it's a rich it's part really, of the neighborhood, isn't it? Yeah, there's not really too many meth heads around here. But, it's not like you know, rich people can still afford high end drugs, so it's. Oh yeah, I mean they wander around. I mean I don't see any truly crazy people. Most of those are more further downtown Toronto, but uh, I mean, or if you head towards Lakeshore this way, there's a lot of iffy people. But uh... hmm. anyway, why don't we get rolling on this and uh, go back to Ashley and ask him, what's your history with this beer? Uh, my history with this beer goes back to October of last year, um, sort of when it came available to me to, to have uh, late October. So I've, I've had it a, a few times. Um, usually if, if I'm going to the LCBO and I'm just grabbing a, f a few cans for the night and there's nothing overly interesting, I'll just grab like a steam whistle Pilsner. Sometimes when I'm in the mood, I'll just grab this, you know, just for something easy to drink and it's got a little bit more flavor if I'm not feeling um, something that's really light because I find this one has a little bit more to it. Um, but you know, just as a, as a beer to grab and go, it's, it's pretty decent. So there he is. Hey, Chris, I have, to, uh, I had to reboot my computer. Now you sound like you're on your phone. I am. All right. So, uh, that's cool. Ash, that, uh, but I'm just going to, before we move to the next one, I'm going to tease Greg by uh, breaking the seal. Oh dear God, Nick. Oh, oh. Nick, you got to save them like I do. Yeah. You can, you can make a necklace with them later. Yeah. Speaking of great stamina, Redbeard, what's your history with this beer? Um, The last three drinks that I've had. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So never, you still have more history than I do because I'm still pouring it. Never had it before. And randomly, it, it wasn't anywhere here in North Bay up until like maybe a month ago. So it worked out pretty well. Oh, yeah. There you go. Really, that's crazy. It's still nowhere to be seen here, so you're still doing. Better. It's got it's got very odd distribution. That's crazy. It's crazy. Cray cray. That's crazy. All right, uh, moving along, Chris, you're back, so you might as well tell us what's your history with von Bugel. 
feel like from this angle, I should be in the Beastie Boys video. Yo. Yo. What the? Careful, you might My get history. throat cancer. So what you, what you, what you Cheers want? Soon. Um, I've never had this beer before. Seriously? Yep. I've never had it. I've never bought it. I've never, you know what? And after the freshest seal came out, made me want to get it even less. <laughs> Fair enough. The valid point. Clearly, you just don't like ultra fresh beer. Clearly. Mm. All right. So we might as well uh, listen to the five minute story of Greg. What's your history with this beer? <clears throat> well, it all started back in 1867 when this great country was born. Uh, so the first time I had this beer was at the uh, Roundhouse Beer Festival last year, which I think was last July or August. I can't remember. Uh, I think it was one of the first times this became available to the public. Uh, tried it then. Really liked it. Then when they opened, uh, yeah, obviously my time is off because when they opened, I guess it was last year. I thought it was this year. Uh, my wife and I went there for like the opening weekend uh, or per, like within the first few days it was open. And we were like the only people there. Nobody knew it existed. It's still pretty quiet there because basically they have a, basically for those people that don't know, Von Bugel Brewing is essentially a Trojan horse for Steam Whistle to make more beer. They have a tap room. There's no, no food there. It's basically a bottle shop. It's usually dead. So we went there. We had a few. Quite enjoyed it. So and like uh, it sells only one beer. Yeah. So we had there. We went. We went a few times uh, there. But again, it's not that exciting because you can't get food there. Uh, then I was wanted to try it in a can, and I literally did not try it in a can till last week because I actually went over there to pick up a few cans. This has very odd distribution. Whereas you can go into any LCBO, any beer store, and get regular Steam Whistle. Both Steam Whistle Pale Ale, Steam Whistle, and Von Bugel, very odd distribution. Many, many, many LCBOs, even around me, do not carry them. I have to actually go out of my way to get them, oh. which never makes me happy, as you know. So, uh, yeah, there's a big gap in my Von Bugel experience, and this is only my second time actually having it in a can. Although oh. I've had it on tap probably about six or seven times at this point. Nice. Yeah. Actually, this is, I should have read the can. <laughs> <laughs> for for more additional, they have more information on the side of the can about this beer than they do uh, on the website. So they say that this thing uses Pilsner malt, caramel malt, Munich malt, unhusk roasted barley, as well as premium Saz and Kazbek hops. The hops that I said they use. And brewer's yeast. And that off the internet, water. So. so hold on a second. That that can came from Greg, right? That's, that's, what? That can that you have, it, that came from Greg, right? No, uh, Nick bought it himself. I bought it at Welland, and you sent it to me. Remember that, that is so funny, because I don't have any of that information on the side of mine. Hmm? Yeah, I bought this in Welland, like, right around the corner from you. So they, they changed something. Yeah, wow. Mine on the side of the side yeah, is your worst size malts. And it's funny, because I was literally just trying to think about what the, the, uh, the grain bill was supposed to be like. And uh, I was thinking they got the color from some roasted barley, mm. not uh, caramel malts. And it says April, April, my, my stamp on it says April 4, 04. Hey, mine's the same. Hmm. All right. All right. Moving along, let's go back to the comments. Oh, shit. We don't want to read those. Uh, actually, who wants to volunteer reading comments other than Greg? Um, yeah, I can read them. All right. Uh, where do we leave off? Um, uh, the meth heads comment from Eric. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, so I replied to uh, Craig. Hello, Craig. Uh, Teku Murray was wondering how he gives a thumbs down to a vid, and then Lee Russell pointed out his stupidity. And now uh, we got two thumbs downs on the video. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> then yeah. um, Lee thinks that Steam Whistle are a bunch of a bitchy, whiny crybabies, or just bitches, which is just what he, exactly what he said. Um, and then Teku Murray, I want to knock their bizarre business model, but they're surviving somehow. And then like herpes, which is, is quite accurate. And um, and then I did read your comments, Teku Murray, so fuck yeah. you instead for being... Nice for uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think you want to read your comments even more when I know it was you. That, that's about it. That's all we got. Jeez. Put yourself right down there with fucking Chris Peters. Oh, wow. <laughs> he, he does have a live stream going on right now. He's going to so, log into other accounts so he can thumbs this down. 
anyway, uh, anyway, I shouldn't have given that idea. <laughs> All right, so moving right back to this. Um, you ready to give some thoughts there, Ash? Yeah, sure. I'll give some thoughts. Um, so I, I, I was turned on to this beer a while back by uh, by a good friend of mine, Teku Murray. Um, he uh, basically called me in the middle of the night. And he's like, yo, I know this just came out, but you have to seek this out because you know how yeah. much I love crushing lagers. So, you know, yeah. I dropped everything I did. I bought a bunch of cans and I was like, Teku Murray, this is amazing. You are a, a lager god. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it's um, all true. Yeah, it's, it's all true. It's, it, it's written in a book somewhere. Um, the history of Teku Murray. So, <laughs> with Teku Murray. <laughs> I'm going to so, rate all pretty low for the style. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, um, so I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm, a, you know, if, if I'm just feeling like just grabbing like a few cans of, of one thing, you know, as I mentioned, I'll, I'll, I'll grab a steam whistle or something like that. But, um, you know, I, I found that this to be a nice option um, when I'm not feeling like a crispy boy and I want something with a little bit more of a malt presence to it. So um, this one does have, you know, it's it basically just steam whistle just with a, a slightly different, you know, grain bill, a little bit darker. Um, this one, you know, aroma is very muted. Not not a whole lot going on on the aroma, uh, but this one definitely has a little bit more of a like a toasted, uh, like toasted bread, like very bready type of character to it. But um, it also has like a, a mineralistic quality to it. You know, it comes across a little bit copper coin, but um, and and a little bit more of a bitterness to it. Not, it's not too sharp of a bitterness or anything like that, but it's still pretty pretty pleasant. Um, it's pretty clean, sort of as you as you I would expect from from something that came from Steam Whistle or Von Bue, whatever the fuck. Um, so you know, it's it's a pretty clean, pretty easy drinking beer. Uh, a Munich Lager. I'll sort of lump this in as a Vienna Lager type of of category. Um, you know, I think for for style, I mean, it's it's a it's an underwhelming style to begin with. You know, it's it's nothing special. So, I think for for style, I'd, I'd probably give it a seven and a half. You know, it sort of hits the points. It it doesn't really blow me away or anything like that. Um, and I think for personal preference, you know, it's it's probably a, a few marks down um, from a from a few other you know cans that I could you know, drink a lot of. To, I guess. So, I would probably give this a seven and a half a personal as well. Oh, seven and a half. All right. So sure. Seven and a half for personal. What'd you give it a style? I didn't I miss that? Yeah, seven and a half. Yep. Oh. Man, York did make that uh, positive effect uh, uh, effect on you when, when he recommended this in the middle. Oh, yeah. Oh, Just God. Something to wake you up in the middle of the night, you had to drive down and get it right away. Even right. though you live in Welland and nowhere near a Toby Co. <coughs> anyway, uh, Mr. Redbeard, who's giving me weird looks. Go ahead, sir. Give um, I haven't had many, if any, other Munich loggers before, so I don't really, really have any basis to go off with this. It's uh, what it is. It's not bad. It's just really not kind of my style. I can't get into nearly the uh, descriptive miss of Ashley. Thanks again for like the third week in a row putting me right after Ashley. I love you, Nick. You're the best. Um, yeah. It's all right uh, for the style. It seems okay. So I know, let's say like seven and a half and personal enjoyment. I don't mind it. It's it's tasty enough. Let's say seven. There you go. Seven for overall. What was the style again? Seven and a half. Jesus Christ, Nick. Pay attention. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Googling, trying to Google the style of Munich really, Lager. And it's all coming up. Really fine. He hasn't heard the Heather. thing I've said tonight. He's yeah, looking at Jesus pornography. <laughs> Look at the fucking chicks on fucking mountain bikes. That's what he's looking at right now. Oh, that's that's a new fetish. Good lord. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's move over to Chris. Why All right. Google more? This beer, okay, it's coming in at 5% alcohol. This is drinking a little bit, and I don't know what's going on with my palate nowadays, but this is drinking a little bit stronger than a 5%. However, it's a... It's a beer that's five percent. I'm I'm gonna compare this to kind of like OV in that in that general vicinity of a Vienna Lager. Eh, it's better than OV. I'll give you that. 
This one drinks a little bit sweet. Um, it's malty like crazy. A lot of caramel taste on this one. Um, and it sits heavy. It's a, it, this one sits heavy in my stomach. Um, I bought two cans of this. I'll probably drink the other one today too, but just to get them out of my fridge and make way for other beers that I actually quite enjoy more than the Vienna lager style or the Munich lager style. Um, but for what it is, uh, you know, it, it hits, it hits the style on the mark. I, 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 you can't really knock it for, for trying to be what it is. And you know what, for style, I'm going to give this one uh, an eight out of 10 for style. Uh, and for my own personal preference, it's not bad. It's nothing really offensive. It's, um, I don't know. It's just something that I don't really gravitate towards. So will I buy it again? Probably not. Um, you know, don't, but you know, with that being said, if, if I can find some other craft breweries out there that are trying to mimic a, a Vienna lager or a Munich lager, then yeah, sure. I'll probably pick those up just to compare and, you know, get the palate going and stuff like that. But will I buy this one specifically again? Probably not. So with my own personal preference and my own, you know, my opinion? personal score on this one, I'm gonna get yeah my my own opinion. Uh, I'm gonna give this one a, I'll give it a seven out of ten. <laughs> it's not bad. I you know if somebody hand me handed me this at a at a party or wherever whatever, and I'll drink it no problem no questions asked. But I won't buy it again. Yeah, I I, I completely agree with that that statement there. Like I won't I won't seek it out. But if someone gave me one, I'll drink it again. It's it's not bad. It's just not my style kind of thing. <clears throat> Fair enough. All right, Mr. Greg, what is your final opinion, sir? Okay, well, admittedly, I don't drink a lot of Munich lagers. In fact, looking out on tap, it looks like I've maybe untapped five over the course of my untapped history. So I'm going to sort of just look at this as sort of a darkish, darkish kind of beer, darkish kind of lager. Like, what this actually, and I'm not necessarily saying it's the same per se but what this kind of reminds me is a good oktoberfest like you get oktoberfest you know I, I always find i have something in my mind that kind of uh that kind of i think of when i drink an oktoberfest going back to the first few ones i ever drank and then i always find most of the time they're a me uh, kind of a sweet mess sweet mess of a beer they're just too sweet this to me is when i think of an oktoberfest what I got echo in there. Uh, it's what I want. So whether it's the yeah. right style or not, I know it's I know it's not. But this to me is when I think of a good Oktoberfest, this is what goes on in my mind. So I actually think this would be a really good fall beer. Um, this is a beer I would want. Uh, I feel steam whistles, their summer equivalent. This is what I'd want when the months get just a tad bit colder. Yeah, actually, tonight it's a little bit on the chilly side for a summer mm -hmm. evening. Um, so this actually goes nicely. Okay, so that being said, in sort of the steam whistle family of beers, of which they do one beer, now they do three beers. I don't know if they do three beers mediocrely or what. I will say, since they've expanded, they've got their much bigger facility. Von Bugle, most of it is, is used to just brew more steam whistles, so they got bigger distribution and they got more supply. Steam whistle, in my opinion, the last six months has gone downhill. Now, I taste it quite often because my wife, that's all she drinks now. When my wife finds a beer she likes, that's the only thing she drinks. So we always have it. The second it gets any more than ice cold, she gives it to me to drink because she wants all her beer super cold. So I try Steam Whistle quite a bit. The last six months or so, Steam Whistle has gone down in quality quite a bit. I'm not going to say quality. There's a certain sweetness that, that – pardon. Oh, turbocharged little Fiat. Look at that. Um, then, uh, Steam Whistle is now a much sweeter beer than it used to be even six months ago. I I'm assuming it has to do with the expansion. I'm not 100% sure. So I don't like Steam Whistle as much as I used to. So I gave Steam Whistle, I think, when we analyzed it, a 9. I really, really liked it. It was always my favorite go-to lager. Um, as the quality's gone down, here Lee's going to have a comment. It's always been low quality, you fool. <laughs> so I'll save Lee if I to make that comment. Uh, this, to me, is now my favorite Steam Whistle product. This is so far the best one, the most consistent one. It's very flavorful. Let's be honest, it basically tastes like Steam Whistle. It's just a darker version of Steam Whistle, which I'm fine with. It's very refreshing. It's something maybe a little bit more for the colder time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bump this rating up. I'm going to give it an 8.5 for style and an 8.5 for personal enjoyment. It's uh, probably not quite as good as Steam Whistle when it used to be better. But I, it's better than Steam Whistle as it is now. It's also better than Steam Whistle Pale Ale. 
even though we haven't discussed that yet, but this is better than that. So there you go. It, I, I, and you know what? Just like uh, every other person tonight, what was your style and overall? I don't even know if you said it. See, Redbeard, he's not just ignoring me. He's ignoring all of us. Uh, eight and a half for both. 8.5 for both. And fuck yeah, me. I'm going to raise the score a little bit. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Um, yeah, I'm uh, a little distracted. Anyway, so what's uh, do I think of this? I think when you said it, and see, I actually was listening to part of that. When you were talking about this being a lot like an Oktoberfest beer, I thought you were bang on because... I, I, I've been trying to look up something about, okay, what exactly is Munich Lager? And whenever you pull up something called Munich Lager, it's usually a Hell's. This is not what I would consider a Hell's Lager. This is more of a Marzen. Uh, this actually almost tastes uh, very akin to like Sam Adams' Oktoberfest. It's got that rich caramel, malty, fruity body and, uh, and, and a nice, like, you're, you're right, like for, for like the, almost like the winter, like uh, heavier months, like the fall months, that this would be a fantastic beer to drink with. Uh, it's not like what I would consider uh, a nice, like light refreshing beer, like uh, like you like Steam Whistle would, although I haven't had Steam Whistle in the last six months, like you were describing. Um, but I think it's nice. I do like Marzins, even though people out there like like Rhino and, and Lee's find Marzins a boring style. Uh, I did find this thing that was... Uh, had, it was uh, it was bready with caramel and toffee, little uh, like uh, like red fruit notes. Uh, it's a smooth beer, clean finish. Uh, it's a bit thick, like a little heavy uh, on the palate, so it does weigh a little bit much in the throat. And there's one thing bugging me about this beer is that when I take a drink, there's like this like sulfuric stringency that's lingering in the back of the like, it's not it doesn't taste like matchstick or anything it just tastes like like yeast or something like that in the back of the palate and it's building as the more i drink it and that's putting me off a little but not putting me off so much that i'm still going to give it sevens for both style and overall and that's my story i'm sticking to it all right so let's go back over to the comments Le comments. Le comments. Uh, Try to read them in uh, French. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, Eric Gilbert is drinking a, a three speed lager by Amsterdam. Can't say no to a 568 milliliter for three bucks. Um, and then Craig over at Camp Beer Reviews was mentioning that uh, our Von Dugel looks like a malt bomb, uh, which Eric agrees with. That is a huge malt bomb. Uh, looks nice, though, says Craig. And then Teku Murray being as sophisticated as he is and as eloquent with his words comes back with a looks like a diarrhea bomb sons that sounds about right eric uh, mentioned that it's a good crusher and that he's mentioning wrong it's ov is way better uh, i just mentioned ov is not really traditional vienna lager the way that it's brewed but uh it i would drink an ov before most macro lagers uh, la 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 la. OV is the camping trip king of beers, says Eric. And I agreed. Um, and then he says that Fat Tire is just horrible, which is actually being contract brewed by, or not contract brewed. It's Fat Tire is being brewed by Steam Whistle. And I would agree, it is not that great. Um, then I mentioned that uh, Teku Murray would probably bring barley wines camping, because that's just the type of guy oh, he my. is. Um, and then uh, Teku Murray's like, what's your point? I have and would again. And then I mentioned, well, you know, it's dangerous. Barley wines and canoe fishing does not mix. Uh, then he said, back in 96, 97, I brought Trois Pistol camping. Change the game. Change the Ooh, game. Bring some shrams, sons. And then uh, he mentioned shrams. That, Yeah, shrams. And then uh, Cantillon in Canoes Works done it. And then Eric, he just brings scotch. Uh, I think he just brings scotch everywhere he goes. And... Uh, and he's only flipped a canoe once, being hemmed up. So that's good, and I'm glad you made it through. I would, I would hate to drink scotch on a camping trip. That sounds terrible. So, bad idea. Nice. And that, that brings right. us up to the comments. Mm. Yeah, so... Oh! Uh, yeah, I should have done the scores while we were doing that. I'm totally off my game tonight for some reason. Apparently. That's all okay, because right. you know we're, we're going to be done anyway at August 1st, so it doesn't matter. Well, it all depends. Uh, if there is a, a true replacement, then yeah, beer analysis will continue. Um, it's more of a matter 
of if they do have a true replacement. Everybody, like Lee and Rod, seem to think there will be. I haven't found any posts from Google's, <clears throat> but I, it wouldn't surprise me if they did. Like if they they did have a replacement, because I mean, really, a lot even of people use not, it. You're losing not, out on a whole bunch of stuff. Use, uh, you can very potentially yeah. use Skype or at least try oh. it. Yeah, I mean, we're, not just us. Like we're small potatoes in the whole thing, but there's lots of people out there that do use the Hangouts for um for for it and have monetized channels which afterwards do you, i mean do you know how much watch time you get from doing a live hangout like this that people watch they have ads on it there's like literally hours per video i mean i get hours per video on my stuff and i only get like eight people watching right now i'm no i'm no joe with the uh, all the beer tube monies actually he doesn't have beer tube monies yet either but he will not until he gets a uniform YouTube will oh. ban it. Even with a billion views, YouTube will still ban him from it. <laughs> All right. So, but like I said, even even if Hangouts goes away, we could, you know, try Skype or something. You know, there's no need to just like give up on beer analysis. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I was thinking. I mean, there might be some down. Uh, so there might be wait. some downtime, but I could see myself doing something like. Or Redbeard did something like where you could try to figure out how to live stream a Skype call. Yeah, we'll figure and if you could, out. And yeah, and if you could do that, there's probably people on that already. Figured it out. How did that? Live call, Skype your way on OBS. That's all you gotta do. Pretty much. Just, so just screen, link. just screen capture and capture the audio, and there you go. The person that's running the hangout has to be the one that is using OBS. That's the only contingency that I can see. But it should work. Or we just do it on Facebook Live. Can why don't we all? Why Facebook don't we all? Let's just all film our reviews, and Nick can just spend a whole lot of time editing them together in a <laughs> weird manner. No, uh, that'd be kind of funny. Good idea. I don't think so, Tim. It'd be I'll kind of funny to do. Next, to do I'll to, set my to, next review in. To do one beer analysis where it's just like Nick sitting there and just like playing videos from everybody. Like, no, it didn't, it didn't even have to be edited. Just like everybody phones in their reviews, like we've, like me and Jamie have done before, kind of thing. Shut and up, Nick, Red Beard. Them all. <laughs> I, I used I used to complain about Greg, but now I have no friends at all. Oh, I miss Greg. All right, yeah, yeah. Shut up, Greg. Okay, so present to everybody here. What the fuck? Wow, you've got the Chris Lee's eyes. Wow, what the hell? You know what? Though, for, for this image, you can see it in my window. For this I image, the flash didn't work. Wow, that was weird. For that picture, though, the flashing kind of worked. It was okay. It's like, there you go. Anyway, 7.7 .7 for style, 7.4 overall. And the, the, the main difference in that was that Chris is the only one that rated the beer lower in this overall. <laughs> but, but, but I reversed ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. You, you did? I thought you gave it 8.5s on both. Oh, I meant I brought the score up. Anyway. Let's bring it down. All right. Who so, brought the score down, down this week? Uh, who brought the score down? Me. <laughs> I gave it sevens. Okay, I reverse load it then. I hide it instead of load it. Yeah, it's like you the lowest rating. Me. I like, I, I like Marzen's. It's just that weird sulfuric yeasty pastiness in the back of the throat that's going. I feel like I was pretty. Wasn't I like only 0.5 off of giving it sevens? Yeah, you gave it a seven point five and a seven. Yeah. So you were yeah, just we're barely only, we're above only at me. Twenty point. We're only on a twenty point scale. Point five is a lot. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I suppose Redbeard gave it uh, point five lower. Anyway, we're we're splitting hairs here. Any comments left? Uh, who's bitching mm. to me now? No oh. other comments except for my own. <laughs> I just saw Ashley's comment. That's awesome. <laughs> what do you say? Ask the question, please. <laughs> Yes, ask the question, please. We'll be here oh, all night. Glorious. Eric you, Gilbert, Eric. Eric what's Eric. next week's beer? Ashley has to read the comment. Wow. Well, first off, Craig would just laugh. Rather than ask the question, he just chose to laugh, hoping that no one else would ask the question. And... But did he laugh quietly or did he laugh out loud? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Uh, and then Eric Gilbert asks, while he's probably sipping some freaking whiskey somewhere, uh, what's next week's beer? Hopefully something worth drinking, he says. Oh, it's worth drinking. It's worth drinking, uh, according to Greg, because it's something that he can yeah. see from his window. Yeah. 
Now you know where cool beer's from. It's another Etobicoke product. This is another beer made of piss from Greg's house. And this will be yeah. the last beer that Greg chooses. Yeah, yeah, it will be for a while. Although I do have a uh, Lech <laughs> that we need to do at some point. If beer analysis continues, I have Lech and OV here that we can do at I didn't, some point. I didn't choose those, though. That's yeah, true. Was, oh, that's was so weird. I can see myself on the TV on the ins- on the inside your house. Yeah, I can see right. it. Well. I know. Isn't this weird? It's like the fourth oh, dimension. Ash. Yeah, I can uh, confirm that Greg did not choose Lech. I was with Nick when he chose it and bought it himself. There's also <laughs> Tiski or whatever. Can, though, or, so not Tiski. Agnes oh, will hate me for trying to pronounce mispronounce this. Is with a, oh, Nick, you're not even a doc. I need, to, I need to get that beer man. Or something? Zivitz. Zivitz? Yeah. Okay. Zivitz. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Is that where that came Black. from? Yeah, I have a can of that. Yeah. I, dra- uh, that I, dra- was... I drank the can you gave me, but I can buy another. Yeah. yeah, yeah same same Sorry. Yeah. You drank that too? I'm like, damn it. I... <laughs> Fuck. Anyway, I'll just drink it. Me and Redbeard can do a duo review. <laughs> I drank the cool beer too that was left off. I was going to grab another one. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I, I get a bit. I I did a dual uh, dual review with uh, Greg with to this. It's it's really for what it is. It's not bad. Very very crushable. Are we offline? Boiler no, alert. we're not offline. Anyway, so it, it shows we're offline. No, we're not. Not for me. It does. Okay. No, well, live in the corner, and we're also still streaming online. So shut up, Greg. All right. All right I think offline. I think yeah. It's let's uh, hopefully something worth drinking. Buck of beer sons, according to Eric Gilbert. Okay, so I think we're done. I think we're going to go to the after chat after this. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. Of course, we have uh, fuck you, Yurt. We have Craig is watching. Great, thank you. We have of Kent Beer Reviews. Check out his channel if you are interested. He's a great UK beer tuber. Eric Gilbert's in the chat. Cheers, dude. Who else do we have in the chat today? That's Lee. not Lee. Oh, of course, and he was kind of bitter, but we're, we'll give him a pass for that tonight. The former king of beer, too. Oh, and uh, Jamie, a uh, basement beer who wisely enough didn't buy a can of uh, Bugle because it didn't have its purity seal because you can't trust uh, it without it. Uh, he made the right choice. Yeah. All right. So I think we're going to go offline. Thanks, Ash. Thanks, Red Beard. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Greg. Um, we're going to take this offline and and, uh, and and Red Beard. Huh? What? Yeah. Green